Hi friends, uh, let's have a look at a new chapter known as Last Class Transform and its application. This chapter is your, you can say, advanced part of your transit analysis. The transit analysis, what we done it was totally into time domain. In this topic, the you need to do your network calculation in terms of your frequency domain. So that's the basic logic, that's the basic difference between this and previous one. So if you understand the difference, your sum and your concept become much easier, my dear friends. So let's have a look. First thing I'll teach you what is what was the difference. Remaining part, your 70% of the sum will I say it was same. Your 30% will be as good as your mathematics 3, your applied mathematics 3, which you will be studying in this semester. So your first chapter of applied mathematics 3 should be perfect before starting with this chapter. I won't be covering a basic basic sum, a basic basic topic of Laplace. So before studying with this chapter, make it sure your Laplace transform of applied mathematics 3, the, at least the basic formulas, you are very thorough with it. So I was just getting for it, my dear friends. The basics even I'll teach you over here. But still, have a look at the Laplace before starting with this chapter. So your things will become much easier. So let's have a look, my dear friends. In this circuit, this network is given to you. A voltage, a resistance, an inductor, and so on. You have a graph for a voltage. So by using this graph, you need to find the V of T. So that's a, something new, which you are getting it. So over here, in terms of voltage, you will be getting unit step signal, that is U of T. You will be getting R of T, that is RAM signal. Or you will be getting a signal, where from there you need to write the equation of time domain. So that's the basic difference in earlier case and this case. Again, this question has the same optimal expression for I of t. But in this case, you cannot get I of t directly. You have to get I of s. Then by using Laplace inverse, you will be getting I of t. So in this topic, you need two concepts. One is your Laplace. Then I inverse Laplace. So you need to apply both the things. That's the reason you said the topic name is Laplace transform and its application. When you say application, you talk about inverse. So let's have a look, guys. Let's start with it. First thing, I need to find the equation for V e of t. I hope you have drawn this circuit, so it becomes much easier for you to solve the further part. When I talk about V of t, my dear friends, if I need to write the equation, my V of t. First of all, it's going very straight, having amplitude 1. The signal which having amplitude 1 and it travels in all the direction, that signal is known as unit step signal, it is defined as but the signal is getting decreased at point 1. So if signal is getting decreased, that means you should have a negative sign. At which point is getting increased at point 1? That means you should have a delay at point 1. So if I need to write the combined equation of V of t, my dear friends, it will be U of t, it is starting at U of t, minus, because it is getting decreased, at which point at U of t minus 1. For example, it would be getting decreased at 2, so the equation would be U of t minus U of t minus 2. It would be at 3, it would be U of t minus U of t minus 3 and so on. So that's the way you got the equation for V of t. So put this equation of v of t in your network. So if you redraw your network, my dear friends, you have a voltage source, u of t minus u of t minus 1, switch, 1 ohm, 100. So first of all, you need to convert, whenever you get unit step, amp signal, and so on, first of all, you need to convert this thing into a Laplace equation. When I talk about Laplace equation, my dear friends, for Laplace equation, you should know the following form base. Laplace u of t will be equal to 1 upon t. Laplace u of t minus 1. If I compare this and this, you will observe carefully, the only the extra part which I am getting is minus 1. I already know the value for u of t. The value for u of t is nothing but 1 upon s. For this minus 1, you need to replace by using an exponential. So, it is replaced by e raised to minus 1. 
if it would be p minus 2, so it would be e raised to minus 4, p minus 3, e raised to minus 4, p minus 4, e raised to minus 4. That's the way you do it and so on. So first, convert the circuit into a Laplace circuit. So it would be plus minus u of t is 1 upon s minus u of t minus 1 s e raised to minus s upon s. Next circuit will be one as it is open. You have a resistance 1 ohm. You have an inductor. For an inductor to be converted, the formula for R remains R Laplace. For L, it is converted as LS. So it will be 1 into S. So now everything is being converted into a Laplace. So let's solve the previous cases as we had done it. I, I have 0, T of 0 minus T greater than 0 plus. So in this type of sum, you can directly start at t greater than 0 plus because ultimately you deal with i of t. So let's start with t greater than 0 plus condition. Now I talk about t greater than 0 plus condition that means nothing is in steady state. When I talk about steady state my dear friends I mean by there is no current flowing in advance at t equals 0 and s in your inductor. So when you be closing the switch at that instant, there will be current flowing through it. That means everything is in neutral condition. So nothing, uh, neither a current source should be drawn in parallel, neither a voltage source should be drawn in series because there is no capacitor. So the circuit of T greater than 0 plus will be drawn as voltage 1 upon S minus E raised to minus S upon S closed resistance 1 ohms inductor 1 ohms this is nothing but your i of s is that everything is in frequency we cannot write frequency because you converted everything into a laplace transform so apply your free will so free will will be 1 into i of s plus so now you cannot apply a voltage formula over here, voltage of an inductor, because this is converted to Laplace a norm. So we just need to write as it is. So this will be 1s into I of s. The LDAVT formula will be where your network is not converted into a Laplace. It is only in numbers, for example, 4 and 3, 3 and 3, 8 and 3. When it is converted into a norm Laplace, the frequency, it should be treated as a variable. As we treat a resistor, same thing they should be written as in form of equation. So we shouldn't apply the voltage of an inductor. Please remember this point, don't make mistakes. T equals 0. So it will be 1 upon s minus e raised to minus s upon s. So if I take i of s common, the equation which I get is s plus 1 equal to 1 upon s bracket 1 minus e raised to minus s. So i of s will be equal to 1 upon s into s plus 1 bracket 1 minus e raised to minus s. So your i of s will be equal to 1 upon s into s plus 1 minus e raised to minus s upon s into s plus 1. So now we will be applying the partial definition in both the cases. So apply partial in both the cases over here as well as over here. So the equation which you get my dear friends after applying partial. So let's do it. So let's apply partial 1 upon s into s plus 1. Your power is 1 so there will be only one unknown. It will be 0. Your power is 1 so there will be only one unknown that is when it could have reached s plus 1. If I need to find e, I need to write the whole equation as it is 1 upon s into s plus 1. So s having a denominator of a having a denominator of s, so write and condition whatever is in denominator of a should make it equal to 0. So this gets cancelled. So a is equal to 1 upon s plus 1, condition s equal to 0, put the value of s equal to 0, so a is nothing but equal to 1. Now you will be getting the value of for b. 
b is nothing but again right as it is 1 upon s into s plus 1 your denominator of b is s plus 1 so we written as it is whatever is in b so right equal to 0 so s plus 1 equal to 0 s is equal to minus 1 so after getting a put the value of b s equal to minus 1 get the value for b and apply the partial for second term as well so power is 1 so only one unknown power is 1 only one unknown a upon b upon if i need to find a so it will be the whole term as it is s s plus 1 condition s equal to 0 this will be equal to wherever you get s so it will be equal to 0 so your term which you which you get over here is this will get cancelled anything which is raised 1 so the a which you will be getting is Now logic says, my dear friend, whenever you have exponential in numerator, you shouldn't consider this part for your partial. So this is a mistake. What normally students do it because this term we need it when we apply inverse Laplace transform. So keep in mind whenever you have a exponential numerator, you will never consider this part in your partial. So leave that part. The remaining part what you have you should consider for your last. And if you see remaining part you have already found out the value for a and b. Please keep that in point. So this is a common mistake which we do it. Okay. So let's write the equation for i of s after when we get the partial. So equation for i of s was this. 1 upon s s plus 1 minus e raised to minus s upon s s plus 1. So after applying partial a was 1, b was minus 1. Take e raised to minus s common. A was 1, b was minus 1. So simplify it, take it open 1 upon s minus 1 upon s plus 1 minus e raised to minus s upon s minus minus plus e raised to minus s upon s plus 1. Before applying inverse, we should know the basic formula for inverse. Inverse of 1 upon s is nothing but equal to u of t. Inverse of 1 upon s plus a is nothing but equal to a. Plus a should be removed by exponential. So it will be written as e raised to minus a t into when the remaining part is 1 upon s, so this will be u of t. Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus a. So it should be equal to e raised to minus, it will be plus. So 1 upon s will be equal to u of t. If it is in case of exponential, e raised to minus s into 1 upon s. 1 upon s, you already know it is u of t. This is nothing but shifting sin is minus, so it will be minus a s. So e raised to minus a s into 1 upon s. So 1 upon s is nothing but u of t plus minus a minus. If it will be e raised to plus a s into 1 upon s, so 1 upon s is equal to u of t. So a plus a is plus a. If it is in terms of this, e raised to minus a s into 1 upon s plus 1. Then what? 1 upon s. Before finding 1 upon s, first you have to remove e raised to plus 1. So it will be e raised to minus t. Then remaining is 1 upon s. 1 upon s u of t. But you have exponential. So Wherever you have t, it will be t minus a. So wherever you have t, it will be t minus a. Wherever you have t, it will be t minus a. Again, Laplace inverse. So it will be e raised to plus a s 1 upon 
plus minus one. So the minus one that will be p is to plus q. So minus one got removed. One upon s is u of t. T is to plus a s. So wherever t, she will be writing t plus a. So it will be t plus a. T plus a. Plus a. So apply this basic formulas, guys. You will get the equation for i of t. So we will be writing taking we get i of s is one more equal to i of t 1 upon s is u of t minus e raised to minus t into u of t minus e raised to minus s upon s that is so is u of t minus t plus s plus one of this so e raised to minus t into u of t again you have exponential as well so it will be minus one minus one so that will be your generic equation of u of t which has to be obtained from the given circuit so that was the logic behind this sum so in this case, whatever you get, your voltage equation either it will be in terms of a waveform or unit step or a ramp signal. So you have to be very careful with this. Apply Laplace and at the end, then you should, if you get I of S, apply inverse Laplace. So the, the above formulas, please make it a point. You have no written all the formula because it won't be discussed in every sums. Thank you so much, guys. Signing off.